Preparing for the economic crisis, 10 tough questions you must ask yourself. Two thirds of all households are preparing for an economic crisis right now. Retail sales have posted their first decline in seven months. The economy is showing signs of slowing. Consumers are scaling back their spending. Retail store closings are happening at a record pace. Most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Nearly 40 million Americans struggle to put food on the table. The federal government is projected to add a trillion dollars to the national debt every year. The Fed continues to inject massive amounts of cash into the economy to keep the economy from collapsing into recession. Do you believe there will be an economic crisis in the near future? If you do, are you preparing for it? I'm not talking about an Armageddon scenario or nuclear war or even a civil war. Just a worst case look at a severe economic crisis and how it could affect you and your family if you're not prepared. No one knows for sure when it will happen and how severe it will turn out to be but I think it would be foolish to think that it won't happen at all. For those who do believe an economic crisis is on the horizon, I would like to pose these 10 questions and discussions that will hopefully make you think and truly grasp the brevity of the potential situation. Not every question will apply to every person, but the idea here is to consider them all to determine your overall true readiness for the next economic crisis. I do want to say up front that these questions may require you to take some pause and give them some serious thought. If you need to, even pause this video until you feel your answer reflects your true truth. I know that I had to take a moment with a few of these questions to ensure I was being completely honest with myself. Question 1. Banks and government organizations have the authority to place restrictions on bank accounts. If the banks, ATM machines, and credit cards all stopped working tomorrow, do you have enough cash on hand to support you and your family for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? This will be one of the very first actual indicators that this serious part of the crisis has begun. The government and financial institutions will ensure that there are no runs on the banks. All accounts will be frozen and remain frozen until such time the government or bank deems it safe to allow you to have access to your own money and even then you will most certainly have daily withdrawal limits for quite a while. Having a good supply of cash initially will provide a huge advantage to you and your family. As everyone is scrambling to find cash to buy emergency essentials, you will be squared away. Question number two. Ask yourself if tomorrow every shelf in every grocery store was completely bare and your ability to purchase food was gone overnight how long could you and your family remain healthy given only what is currently in your cupboards and what you can produce yourself? Do you have three months to a year of staples and dry goods stored away? Do you know how to plant a garden? Do you already have the seeds on hand to start the garden? Even if you have the ability to plant a food garden, would the food that you grow be available to eat in time to sustain you and your family? Can your family feed themselves without any outside support or help? If the answer is no, then I suggest that you are not ready to endure a serious economic crisis. Question 3. If municipal water sources are shut off and no one has any water for sale, do you have access to a source of fresh water? If not, do you know techniques of how to collect water, purify it, and make it safe to drink? The human body can't last more than a week without water. 
If you don't have a clear answer to this question, you might want to make it one of your first priorities. Question 4. How would you and your family react to losing all electricity and phone and cell ability for six months or longer? The lights going out, no TV or computer and phone would probably be a net positive effect for most families. They might actually start talking to each other or even spending real quality time together. So at first I thought this wasn't a big deal. But as I really began to think about the long-term effects, the issues it would cause began to materialize. Think for a moment if you live in a cold climate and depend on electricity for heat. Or in a place that gets unbearably hot in the summertime and you use electric fans or air conditioning. How would you adjust without it? Are any of your family members young, sick, or elderly? Usually these are the first victims of extreme weather. But without electric heat and air conditioning, how long do you think even a healthy city dweller would last? Is your stove electric? If so, then contemplate how you would prepare food that requires cooking. Without electricity, your refrigerator is worthless. Think about everything you consume or use to prepare meals that comes out of your icebox. Do you know how to keep food from spoiling without a refrigerator? Do you have an electric water heater? If you do, you will be taking some very cold showers, especially in the winter time. Are you prepared for that? Just think about everything in your household that plugs into a wall socket and ask yourself if you can live without it. Are you and your family ready for a long duration without electricity? Question 5. If your utilities runs on natural gas and the city source is cut off or the delivery truck isn't available to replace or fill your tank, how long would you still have those gas-powered utilities? When the natural gas runs out, do you have an alternate means to cook or heat your home? Question 6. If law enforcement is no longer a phone call away to assist you, unable to respond for whatever reason, do you have the means to protect yourself and your family from threat or harm? Whatever your means of protection will be, ask yourself how proficient you are using it. When was the last time that you tested your proficiency to protect yourself and your family? Have you ever studied or practiced self-defense techniques? Is your family able to adequately protect themselves in your absence? Question 7. If a member of your family becomes critically injured or seriously sick, do you have the necessary knowledge, supplies, and means to aid in their recovery without the ability to call 911 or have access to any hospital or emergency services? Can you splint a bone fracture? Are you trained to perform CPR? Do you know how to treat someone who has gone into shock? Do you know the techniques to stop the bleeding of a gunshot wound, a serious cut, or a crushing type injury? Are you familiar with herbal medicine remedies that can be naturally made to help the healing process? If your answer is an absolutely yes, then I suggest that you are not ready to endure a serious economic crisis. Question 8. How do you normally get around from point A to point B? How many miles away is your place of work? How would you get to work tomorrow if there was no gas in your vehicle and none available for purchase anywhere, and all public transportation is down? Do you have an alternate plan to get to work every day? Do you have the ability to transport you and your family with this alternate form of transportation? Question 9. Think for a moment if, for whatever reason, your entire household lost their ability to produce income. 
The reason isn't the important aspect of the question, just the fact that your current source of income comes to a permanent halt and ceases to exist. Would you have the means to continue paying your current financial obligations? If so, for how long? And what do you think would happen after that time has expired? If you don't own your home and can't make the mortgage or rent payment, how long do you think it will be before your landlord or bank issues you an eviction notice? And if that happens, where will you go? Have you ever really given that any serious thought? During the next economic crisis, it could very well be the case that the federal and even state governments have to pull back all of their social programs just to remain solvent as a nation and as a state. Social Security checks, Medicare, Medicaid, government and state retirement checks, disability checks, welfare, food assistance, housing subsidies, energy and utility subsidies, education, child care assistance, pensions, all could be gone. VA benefits, gone. All mechanisms of governmental financial support are no longer. Honestly ask yourself how long you and your family can sustain your current standard of living. If the answer is anything but indefinitely, then I would suggest that you're currently living beyond your means and are not ready to endure a serious economic crisis. As you go through the process of asking yourself these questions and determining if you are prepared and if not, how you can make yourself prepared, I have one final thought. There is no doubt that precious metals will retain our wealth through an economic crisis and provide us an advantage over others who had their wealth denominated in fiat currencies and lost everything. But, question 10. Do you know if your mortgage company, utilities, and water company will accept silver as payments? Do you think your local grocery store or gas station would accept silver for food and fuel? Do you think any of your neighbors will accept silver as barter? I fear for most people the answer will be no. My point is that an economic crisis involving a currency that you use will impact so much more than just the cost of goods and services. We're talking about the potential insolvency of a nation. There are two aspects that maintain the U.S. economy. The fact that the dollar serves as a world reserve currency and that presently all OPEC oil is paid for in only U.S. dollars. The world has clearly announced that both of these aspects are soon coming to a close. And before they do, I hope you have an honest answer to each of these questions. Do you think there will be an economic crisis? Are you prepared? Did this content help you in any way? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you to all who take the time to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I don't monetize my channel, so your efforts really help the channel to grow and be seen by others. If you're not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Then be sure to select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. And feel free to share this content with all.